inmate at the Virginia Department of Corrections, Red Onion State Prison. To accept this call, press zero. This is Red Onion Randy, and I'm currently serving 1,214 years in the state of Virginia at Red Onion State Prison without the possibility of parole. This is my podcast, and I hope you enjoy listening to me. If you've listened to my last two podcasts in a row, I've discussed fighting. And it's kind of strange that I did because I just had an incident in the pod over the kiosk. For those of you who don't know, uh, the kiosk is run by JPay uh, throughout the Virginia prison system and throughout other prison systems in the United States of America. And it's basically a secure computer bolted to the wall that gives us the ability to buy music, uh, to buy a small handful of video games, and to email our loved ones and to receive pictures from our loved ones. Currently, that's all that they provide. Oh, I forgot newspapers from uh, the Associated Press. And in order for us to use that, we have we have to buy a little mini JP5 tablet, which is you know got a four and a half inch screen. So to buy music or to access emails or the newspaper or anything, you have to take your player down and plug it in with a USB cord and log into the kiosk. And then you know you can download your music, your emails, you can send emails, and so on and so forth. And as you can imagine, there's only one kiosk in the pod, and there's quite a few guys who want to use said kiosk, which can cause a bit of friction. It can cause a bit of tension. And you have two guys in this pod. I'm not going to say names, but you have one guy, he only uses the kiosk every other day. But when he gets on it because his cell is right there over top of the kiosk, He just has to go down the steps on the top tier, and he's the first one at the kiosk. Nobody can beat him to the kiosk. So when he gets on, he likes to spend the full 20 minutes on there, and we only get 60 minutes. So that leaves 40 minutes for everybody else. Yeah, it is frustrating, but it is what it is. And then you have another guy who wants to get on the kiosk. He's an older guy. He's a bit of an asshole. He's set in his ways, you know, and he's got, he's a black guy, and he's, he's, he's got some racism and hatred towards white people. And there's quite a few white dudes in the pot. So what he likes to do sometimes, if he gets on the kiosk, he'll do what he does. And then he'll start pressing the keyboard, uh, the keys real fast on the keyboard, just over and over and over again. And if you do that enough, it'll freeze the kiosk up because you're trying to give it way too many commands too fast. And that doesn't work. It freezes it up. It's cheap equipment and components to begin with. So sometimes you just, you can't get to the kiosk. And, you know, like I said, you have a lot of guys that want to get on the kiosk. And I'm one of them. You know, I email quite a few people from around the world. Thankfully, you know, I like to stay in touch with them as best as I can. Now, you got this other guy. This guy is in his early 60s, he, uh, and I, I've been cool with him. I have bought this guy a commissary. Uh, anything he has asked of me, I have given to this dude. There's my buddy in here that I hang out with a lot that I'm really cool with. actually bought this guy a television because when his TV broke, His family wouldn't do a damn thing for him because his family doesn't give a damn about it. My buddy actually had his people send him the full amount to buy him a brand new television. So he's been real frustrated with the kiosk. Now, this guy comes out 60 minutes for pod rec every day, the same as we all do. And then he gets to come out an additional four to five times every single day to clean the pot up, especially during COVID, because they're constantly spraying and disinfecting and doing everything they can to keep guys in prison from catching it. And there's three of them, there's three housemen that do that. 
they all go over to the kiosk and use it several times throughout the day. But this guy wants to get pissed off because two individuals think they own the kiosk and they, they, they want to disrespect other people in the pod. Because neither one of them is liked at all. Neither one of them dudes has friends. Nobody hangs out with them. Nobody does anything for them because of their attitude and the way they present themselves and conduct themselves. And quite frankly, I don't feel sorry for them because they bought it on themselves, and I've done everything I can to reach out to them. It is what it is. Get mad at it, dude. I don't care. Go over there and whoop their ass. I don't care. But when you threaten to break the kiosk, and you've already done it before in another pod that I was in, because we was in a six pod together. And he broke the kiosk over there, and he came out of his own mouth and admitted that he was the one that broke the kiosk. So there's three of us sitting at the table, me, the guy I have a problem with, and another guy that's just sitting there doing his best to stay out of the situation. So when the dude tells me, yeah, look, I'm going to break that kiosk, I said, hold up, man. Don't punish the whole part. Don't punish the guys that have done nothing but treat you better than your own family treats you. Don't disrespect us by breaking the kiosk, man. If you got a problem with them too, go say something to them too. And while I was talking, you know, I wasn't expecting anything. I wasn't even looking at the dude. I was actually looking at my player. I was reading an email and talking to him at the same time. So, he completely flies off the handle. Man, you went pawn, I'm a coward or punk. I'm like, if I stop, I look him square in the eye and I said, look, man, I'm not implying anything. If I had something to say to you, I'd say it to your damn face. So he blah, 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 and he stands up on me. Now, look, I've rehabilitated myself. I'm done with violence. I, I, my God, I do not want to ever get into another fight in my life. I pray that I never get into another fight in my life. But I am never, ever going to allow another man to stand over top of me, to loom over top of me. It ain't going to happen. I'm not going to put myself in that vulnerable a position. It ain't going to happen. So I stood up. So I didn't step to him, but I kind of just positioned myself where if I have to move, I have freedom of movement to do what I need to do to put this down, this dude down as hard and as fast and as viciously as I possibly can because I don't play when it comes to a fight. I've seen too many dudes try to dance around and act like they Muhammad Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard combined and get their ass whooped because they didn't take it seriously. I know it, not me. I know better. So, but this is the thing. I keep my hands down. I don't, I don't lift them up. I keep them down by my waist, and I don't even clench my fist. I keep my hands open. And I'm looking at dude. I'm doing my best to keep my face neutral and calm. I'm doing my best to keep my voice calm. I'm telling myself, look, man, don't let this escalate. Don't let this escalate. And he blah, 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 running at the mouth. I let him. I stand there, and I, I take his abuse. It is what it is. I don't like it. But it's just words. I don't particularly care that much. So he calls me a coward mother effer. And I let it slide. I, I don't appreciate someone insinuating or saying that I've had sexual relationship with my mom. That ain't never happened and it ain't never going to happen. I did take a step towards her. You know, just... To let him understand, look, dude, yeah, I might be standing here. I might be listening to you. I'm not cussing you back. I ain't punched you yet. That don't make me scared. Not trying to assert my dominance, but just to let him know, hey, look, man, you're not dealing with a punk. You're dealing with someone who, who, who actually does enjoy fighting and knows how to fight. But like I said, I kept myself calm. You know, and I'm like, look, man, stop disrespecting me, dude. I ain't done a set of damn thing to you. So he just he keeps going at it, man, and then, and he calls me a mother effer again. This time, that's it, dude. I'm I'm gonna knock his ass out. I'm tired of listening to him. It is what it is. I'm going to say it. Ain't the first time I can deal with it. So I step at it. You know, and I, I'm getting ready to draw back to hit him. 
But the dude that's sitting there at the table doing his best to stay out of it. And I got the gun. I got the riot gun pointed directly at my face. I don't care. I get shot, I get shot. It ain't the first time. But he, this time, when I step at him and I get ready, you know, he sees and he jumps behind the dude that's sitting there. And he uses him as a human shield. And that makes me stop. Because in good conscience, I can't swing with this dude sitting in between us. Because I actually like the dude and I've got respect for the dude. You know what I'm saying? It's sitting in between us. And I don't want him getting shot. I don't want him getting hit. And you got the canine unit right outside the building. So when they come in, they letting that dog go. And let me tell you something. They got some big-ass dogs up here at Red Onion. I mean, they got some big damn dogs. And I ain't trying to get him bit or anybody else bit. Because once, look, I've said it before and I'll say it again. These dogs are barely trained. And they are kept wild for a reason. So when they come off that leash, man, hell, they're more subject to turn around and bite their handler than they are anybody else. And you got guys in the park when the gun starts shooting, you if you're not a part of the fight, you have to lay down, you know, to show that you're not a part of it or anything. Because otherwise you're going to get locked up or get caught up in something you don't want to get caught up in. So... When he does that, that shows me that he's really not trying to take it this far. Which, let me tell you something. If you ever go to prison and you call somebody a mother effort, you better be ready to take it that far. Cause dudes don't play that crap. And you ask anybody that has known me, you reach out to my brother Jason on Facebook, and you find out what would have happened 10, 15, 20 years ago if somebody would have disrespected me and my mom like that. There would have been blood on that floor, period, end of story. Damn the consequences, I don't care. But thankfully, you know, at that time, once I saw that, I just went, you know what, man? Dude, you said everything you ever had to say to me. Don't speak to me again. I'm done with you. And I just sat back down, and I picked my player up, and I started reading my emails again. something really good and I'm and even just talking about it and reiterating I'm a little frustrated you know I, the, the anger wants to come back on me but I'm not going to let it I forgive the dude and I choose to forgive the dude for his disrespect because I'm not the slave to that anger I'm not going to let that chain me and hold me back from being who I want to be so I make the choice to forgive him and that's the end of it I'm not going to say nothing else to him. I'm just going to do me. That's just one less person I have to deal with, and it saves me some commissary because I don't have to give it to him to help him out no more. But the thing I learned the most about this, and it took me a little bit, I mean, let's face it, you know, I was a little bit heated, and I had to come back to the cell and kind of chill out and then analyze it, you know, with a cooler head. Um, but it was this. Until that very last mother effort he said to me, I was calm the whole time. My heart didn't start racing. It didn't beat fast. I didn't get flushed. My hands didn't shake. There was no adrenaline spike. There was, there was really no anger up until that last point. And I guess he saw how serious I was and he realized he pushed me too far and he had to use a human shield. But... I'm actually proud of myself. And I, I know that sounds crazy. Wait a minute. Dude, you almost got to a fight. How in the world can you be proud of yourself? Well, I'm proud of myself because this. Probably two years ago, I'd have just swung. Well, once he said what he said at the table, as soon as he stood up, I'd, I'd have probably done my best to drop his ass right then and there. So the fact that not only did it not act you have one minute remaining. Go into a fight, but I remained calm and cool and collected and in control of my emotions and my thoughts the whole time. And I hope that you can learn something from that if you ever find yourself in this situation. Do your best to de-escalate it. 
This has been Red On You Randy. Please check out my website, redonyourrandy.com. And for those of you who listen to me on the Apple Podcast, I would truly appreciate it if you would not only review me, but rate me also. Take care and stay safe. Thank you for using GTL.